Hello everyone and welcome to our Facebook Live. We're doing another one today from the warmth of our pump house. It's a little bit windy outside so it'll make the, the video sound probably a little difficult for everyone to hear. At the moment we're feeding one of our bottle calves, Hershey. I know a lot of people will be quite familiar with him. So we're going to wait for a few people to tune in before I go into more detail but in that time, we'll just let him enjoy his milk. As calves are nursing, whether it's on a bottle or on the mother's teeth, they create a suction with their tongue. So they're able to effectively draw all that milk into the mother's or into their mouth without really having to take any breaths at all. They are breathing through their nose, but they take very few gasps of air while they're nursing. Hi, Deanna. You're the first one on. And hopefully he has enough milk left over. He takes a little bit longer. So enough people can catch him nursing. Or I might have to mix some more up. So he's nursing away and he's just about finished his bottle. I mix up um, just under three pints for him. And each day they start to drink more and more. And that right there, you could see he gave the bottle a really good bunt or a, a push. So naturally, when they're nursing on a cow, they would do that to get more milk to flow down from different quarters of the udder into the one they're nursing on. So you might be able to hear, we can hear him sucking a little bit of air. So that means he's finished. We can maybe mix a little bit up for him later as he continues to bash me asking for more milk. We'll maybe give him a little bit more. So this is how we mix up our milk for our calves. We start with some warm water. We'll see how well I can do this with one hand and having a calf bunt me all the way. So I'm going to ask for your patience as I do this. So we fill this up with warm water. I'm going to fill it roughly four cups of water. And I might not give him all of that. It's just going to be easier for me to do the measurements. So we pour all the hot water or the warm water, just nice and lukewarm, into an ice cream pail. There are never, uh, never too many uses for an ice cream pill, so that's one of ours. So well, he's gonna follow me, wanting some more. This is what our milk powder looks like. It's uh, very similar what people use um, in terms of protein powder. It has a, a very similar uh, protein content. This is about 21%, and it's about the consistency of, of flour. Flour or powdered sugar. Come on. Scooch. I'm gonna mix up the powder. Hershey. And uh, give it a good whisk. This is what the bottle looks like. Normally I would wash it, but because he just because he was just nursing from it, I'm not going to bother. If we can do it one-handed. Pour all the milk in. let him go to town on that. I'm not going to let him have all the milk, probably just half, and then he'll get fed again, 
fed again at around eight o'clock. This is one of two of our bottle calves. Our second one is actually um, attempting to get paired up with one of our cows who lost her calf today. Her calf was coming backwards and unfortunately it didn't make it. So that's one of the reasons why we hold on to our bottle calves instead of selling them or uh, giving them to someone else who might need them because usually down the road, we all end up needing one ourselves. Because these calves have been bottle fed for a couple of weeks, it's going to take a bit more time and patience to get them to accept the cow rather than us. So we'll match them up, we'll put the cow in a squeeze and we'll get the calf to nurse from her instead of the bottle. And usually if they're hungry enough, it doesn't take too much time. They just have to learn to nurse off something different. He's going to continue nursing. until I decide he's done and I think he's pretty good now. He can wait and have milk a little bit later. I'm gonna go over a few of the essential items that we use here during calving season. First one is of course uh, a bottle. We have numerous ones here. We have bottles used only for healthy calves. And then we have bottles that are designated for if we have sick calves, we don't want to mix the two. So we're not passing bacteria and germs back and forth between the healthy and the sick calves. Um, that's used for once the calf is born, getting to the stage where we're waiting or assisting the, the calf to be born or assisting the cow. We have numerous tools um, that we use. The first are these OB gloves. These go all the way up to the shoulders and they do come in one size only. So that makes things a little bit more difficult if you have smaller hands and are assisting with the calving process. But in that case, we do have these latex gloves, regular surgical latex gloves that you're able to put over top and you can get those in smaller or larger sizes. So then you're able to put those over the, the big obstetrical gloves and not have to worry about things not fitting as well as they maybe could. Um, a lot of you probably were wondering what I meant by chains in the last video I did. They're not your regular uh, rusty old chains. These are specially designed birthing chains or obstetrical chains and they go around the calves legs right about where their wrist would be. You thread them through itself and then you put it right over its wrist. And in that way you can assist the calf um, and pull it out if, if you have to. Chains go on both legs and then you can also double wrap the chains to give a little bit more to spread the, the pressure of the chains on the calf's legs because it can um, hurt the animal a little bit if you if you pull too hard or if you don't double wrap the chains. Once you get the chains on the calf, uh, you're going to attach these handles and they're just going to get attached like so. And then you just pull on those handles both at the same time. So you're pulling with even pressure on the calf's legs as you're pulling the animal out. Those are pretty much everything we use in terms of equipment. We do use surgical soap and we use lubricant to make sure everything is a little bit more slick and, and easy to move around and the calf kind of glides out. And then the surgical soap just to clean everything off, your hands as well as the cow. Once the calf is born and if it's a little bit cooler at night, we put on these ears, they're called. Um, there's probably a more technical term for them, but that's what, we, that's what we call them. So these yellow parts, and they can be different colors. These yellow parts go over the calves' ears. Um, this wide band goes right down the bridge of their face, right around their, uh, between their eyes and down to their nose. 
and then this part wraps right around their, right around their nose. The problem we do find with these are that the cows lick them off. They find that all of a sudden there's this random object on the ears of their calves. So they're not too impressed by that. So they try and lick it off. Um, they are Velcroed, but that doesn't really stop a, a good mum from licking those off the calves. But luckily the weather is warmed up enough, so we don't really need to use those as much. We did use uh, a few of them earlier when it was colder. And so far the ears on all of our calves are good. So that's what we're looking for. So now that he's done, we're gonna go out and we're going to check on the calves that we had born today. We had a few of them. Come on, Hershey. Come on. He might decide to stay in here, but we'll kick him out because he'll make a mess. They're pretty good at following once, uh, right before they've had their milk, but afterwards they don't, they're not as keen on paying attention to us. the other side and I'm going to go around everything's looking quite messy now it melted a lot yesterday so it's getting to the point where it's rubber boot season this is our great Pyrenees Lizzie she's our livestock guardian dog so she hangs around and makes sure that no coyotes or any other predators that are roaming around. Great Pyrenees are really active at night so starting at around nine o'clock she won't really be in the in the barnyard or near our house. She'll be out in the out in the fields patrolling those areas. She's really good around the cattle. She still probably hasn't learned as well as she could have that you're not supposed to go around the mother cows when they have their calves, but she's only a year, a year and a half and still figuring some things out. We're gonna go into our calving barn. This is where any of the cows or first calf heifers go once we've brought their calves and them up from the bigger pastures. So we have a nice long alleyway, nice and wide that we can use to accommodate another pair if we need to. And then two pens on this side and the pen at the back with the, the yellow steel, that's our maternity pen. So any of the cows who need a little bit of assistance, we'll put them in there and we're able to tighten them up and uh, help them with their calf. This is one of the calves that was born earlier today. So it's a Speckle Park cross calf. Um, I'm not sure if it's a, a heifer or a bull calf. So it looks pretty similar to its mother, so it's really nice. This is one of my favorite breeds. I love the, the different color. And Speckle Parks can be a little bit more white or a little bit more black, but they'll usually have white tips which mean or black tips which means they'll have black around their muzzle so right around their nose and then black ears if they're if they're more white overall rather than these two that are more black and white throughout so this is a really nice calf um it probably weighs around 85 pounds which is what we're striving for we don't want calves that are too big we had a couple already this year that clocked in at 100. One was 139 pounds, and then I think the other one was uh, about the same or 130 pounds. So that's a little bit large and excessive. The cows were able to have the calves. Um, the one cow was able to have her calf no problem, and then the other one just needed a little bit of help. Um, but generally, as a rule, we like them 
around the 85 model. So here she figured out where we were. And uh, these are the rest of the cows that had their calves. So they'll stay in here for at least a day. They can be in here for any amount of time that's longer or shorter than that. It all depends on how many calves we're having throughout the day. If we're not having very many, then they can stay in here a little bit longer. And if we're having lots of calves and the weather especially isn't very nice, they'll get cycled out more frequently. So this is where our other bottle calf is. And she's probably not too impressed that she's in here right now. She hasn't figured out that uh, this cow is, is her new mum now. So this cow is the one who lost her calf. And that'll happen. In her case, the calf was the wrong position, so the calf was backwards. And when the calf is backwards, it's really difficult for the, the delivery to happen, even when it's assisted. So this will be her, her new calf. And once they get paired up, and once Kiss figures out that that'll be her new mother, uh, they'll do really well together. And it's always best when a, a calf is paired with a cow rather than us being the, the feeders of the calf. Because even though the milk from the powdered milk is formulated, so it's very similar to natural cow's milk, it's never quite the same. So being able to have, a, have an actual mother will be better for the calf long term. We always try to pair the, the calves with uh, the cows right away because the cow will still have that, that natural instinct at the beginning to bond with their baby. So you want to get, you want to get rolling on that as quickly as possible. So when, the calf, when this calf does go away, she does get a little bit concerned. She's still not quite sure about it. She knows something's different but she's not quite sure what that is. So they'll stay in here. We'll have to put the cow in the squeeze and uh, get the calf to learn to nurse from her. But up until that point, she's still going to think that I'm going to feed her, but we, we won't feed her and get her to learn to nurse from the cow. But still, we get to keep Hershey as a bottle calf until uh, we need him. It's never, it's never the best when we need to take a bottle calf and um, graft it onto a cow. But sometimes it happens, and it's better that everyone is, is paired up and doing well. The dog's also wondering why the calf is in here rather than outside, since they're usually wandering around the yard. And for the dog, there are all sorts of really interesting and exciting smells and sights. When a, a cow has had her calf, there's a lot of leftover material. There's a lot of afterbirth leftover. So the dog quickly cleans that up, and she's very happy to do that. This is one of the uh, other calves that's in here. I think, judging from the four that are in here, four calves today, I don't think any got moved out. But I did see there was one calf recently born in with our first calf heifers. So we'll go take a look at it. We'll also do a check. Uh, we try and check on the cows and heifers every hour and a half to two hours, depending on what the temperature is. It's not bad today. It's a little bit windy and cooler. So we'll check a little bit more frequently than we would have yesterday when it was really nice. Lizzie, come on, come on, come on. So we'll close the doors to the barn. Our barn is, uh, it isn't heated, it is insulated, but 
we are able to heat it with the space heater if we need to. When it was a little bit colder earlier this month, we just have a little bit of a, a platform up at the back corner and we have our space heater on there. So once it gets going and you have a number of cows in there, it gets pretty toasty. And the cattle don't really need it too warm. Once the calves have pretty much gone through a day and a bit of being outside of the cow, they can pretty well stand quite cold temperatures. So this is our first calf heifer pen and we have them just a little bit closer to the yard because first calf heifers are notable for just having a few more issues in terms of calving or uh, accepting their calves just because it's their first time and it takes a little bit of getting used to. So they're right close to where our calving barn is where our cows are a little bit further down. So we have two calves that are pretty, pretty brand new. The nice thing about heifers as well, they're usually not as protective as uh, mature cows. But it can depend. These two look all right. So this calf was just born probably an hour or a bit ago. It's a little bull calf. And we'll bring the calf sled over and load it up and put the pair in the barn so they can stay a bit warmer. and they can spend a little bit more time together figuring out that they're a pair before they get put in with the rest of the cows. This is the other little calf. They're really similar in color. They're kind of a dark chocolate brown. That bull calf is a little bit bigger. I think this one is a heifer. No, it's also a bull calf. So these heifers have done a really good job of having their calves assisted and then licking them off and the calves standing up and figuring out how to nurse. It usually takes the calves a few tries to figure out which end of the cow to nurse on. They have that instinct that uh, gives them the extra leg up in terms of knowing what to do next, but sometimes it takes them a few tries to get it right. This calf seems to be doing a really good job of knowing what to do, but we're interrupting a bit, so we'll leave them and let them spend some time by themselves. So the dog just found um, part of the placenta. So she'll carry that out of here and have a good snack for later. The heifers and the cows will clean up the placenta after they've calved, or most of them will, and do a pretty good job of it. And the reason they clean it up is to uh, remove any trace that there was a, a calf born. Because in the wild, any wild mammals that um, give birth, there will be a lot of extra pieces and bits that go along with that birth. So in order to minimize any predation for their calves, they clean up the remnants of that birth. So that means they'll eat the placenta. Uh, so eating the placenta removes all trace and then it also provides them and it gives back a lot of nutrients that they would have lost through the, the birthing process because that takes a lot of energy. So it gives them a little bit more nutrients because
because as they're having their calf and the time afterwards, they're not really be, they're not really going to be grazing or getting any additional food for a little while, especially if they're wild animals. So those are those two. These are the rest of our first calf heifers. So they should all calve within the next um, 20 days or so. They've all been calving uh, really close to one another, so that's what we like. As you can see on this heifer, they're pretty round. Uh, there's a lot of calf in there. And there'll sometimes be instances where you'll look at a cow and you'll think, ah, she's not really that pregnant, and then she'll give you twins. Or you'll look at one cow and think, uh, she's not that big and she'll have a, she'll have a huge calf. It's just all in the way the animal carries themselves and the way the calf is positioned as well. So she's, she's really round, whereas some of these others aren't quite as big and it can also be, um, one of the reasons can also be that they're a little bit later in terms of their pregnancy or their due date. And the way we're able to tell when a, when a cow or a heifer is about to calve is their udder starts to fill up so it'll look really full. They'll start to be really restless. They'll move around a lot. They'll isolate themselves from the rest of the herd. They'll flick their tail back and forth. They'll just look generally uncomfortable. And then they'll start to lie down A shorter video today just because it's a little bit cooler out here and uh, not wearing gloves and holding my phone gets a little bit frigid so we're gonna wrap up we're going to say uh, bye to these calves and we're gonna come and pick them up with the calf sled and the ranger and just give that other bottle calf some milk we'll put that cow in the squeeze and let her nurse so they can start bonding together as a pair. Thanks everyone for watching and we'll have another video soon, probably Wednesday, so be sure to tune in then. Thanks for watching.